everyone, it's April with Hair 101. I'm going to show you a technique today that's a star pattern for a color. And we're going to be taking her, she has, she bleached her hair on her own and she actually had a lot of really black color in her hair for a long time. And so she removed it on her own, now it's grown out, she wants to go back dark. So we're going to, um, we're going to do what I call the star pattern and what that is is you draw a really fun star. You can make it as deep or as shallow as you want on the point and then you alternate colors. I'm going to be alternating black and then a really dark brown. I did, um, I'm using the Redken Black, the 1B Onyx and the Shades EQ with the processing solution, just what, what you're supposed to do with that one. Um, and it's, it doesn't really have like a volume, it's, it's like a five, it's like a deposit only. So all of the shades EQs are deposit only colors. So that's what I'm using for the black and it has a really deep, deep, deep black, almost like a blue tint to it and it's shiny, it's super shiny. And then for the brown, I did a 4GB and that's just a gold beige. And I did a GB on that one just because it helps to keep the color a little bit more warm, especially when you're coloring over blonde. So those two colors are going to just barely offset each other and give her some dimension and depth. So here's how we're going to start. We're going to take, you're going to need a color comb with a metal tip and we're going to decide where we want the first point on her head. Now we're going to end up cutting this really shattered um, texture with the razor and everything for her haircut later on. But um, first we have to decide where she's going to part her hair to the side where we're going to start putting these points on the star. So do you usually just part down the middle like this? Mm -hmm, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so because of that, I'm going to try to put the first um, point to the star to where it comes kind of at an angle off this way. Because if you do it that it goes straight down the middle, then you'll, you could do that, but you would just have like a solid block of that color that goes on both sides. And I kind of want to have it onto an angle so that you get like, more of like a striping effect. But you'll see when it's all done, it's not too stripey because it has a lot of movement in it because of the, the shape we're doing. So I'm gonna start right here on the top of her head, a little bit more towards the back. It's gonna be um, right off of the apex. It's going to just be right behind that. So that's where I'm gonna take my first point and I'm gonna go from over her right eye, just straight back and make a diagonal section in there. Then I'm going to make the first point. And that looks about good for the <clears throat> for how deep I want these. If you go super deep, then you'll have like bigger sections of the same color. So if you want them to be more stripy, you would want to make a little bit more shallow. Um, so then on the star, once you get that point settled, you're just gonna take your comb and visualize a straight line this way. So you're kind of trying not to think of the front of the head anymore and just think this is the front of my star. So draw straight out and then pick up another little triangle, hold it in your hand. And then you're gonna take your comb and you're gonna go straight over from that point and then pick up another little section there. And you can hold all of these up and check your star pattern. Make sure the partings are very clean and I've done this with blonde and dark brown before. Really, really pretty. You can go as dramatic or as subtle as you want with this. And then now for the last two points, you're gonna go from the very top first section again, put your comb right on top, go over that section, and that's just gonna tell you where to draw the line. So you go straight down and then just pull a section up. Clean it up a little bit. And then for the last one, you're gonna go off this side. So go straight down. This one can be a little bit more tricky. You need to kind of twist your arm around. So there's our star that we drew on her head. If some of the spots are a little too deep, this is where you would fix them. Now that you have the basic shape in there, you can go through and, and adjust a little bit. Okay, so you need gloves for this because it can get pretty messy. Now you get to decide what color you like more. Um, she wanted to be more black, so I'm gonna do this first start black. And then 
Let me clip it up really fast so I can stick my gloves on. I'm just gonna twist it and anchor it down. Make sure that it's not moving anymore because you don't want to lose all that work you just did. Okay, now if her hair um, had been bleached to a really, really light pale blonde, similar to like my hair, I would need to do some kind of a filler in the hair or add a filler to the color. But since she still has a lot of warmth in here, I don't need to do that on this, this particular color. But if you are coloring back anyone with really light hair, the way you can do that, it's hard on something like this to do a feeler because then you would have to go through and like trace out the pattern again. What I would do is I would just stick a squirt of like a warm color, maybe like an orange red, like a maybe a 6OR or something like that, just a little teeny squirt into my base color. Like if you were doing a brown and a blonde into the brown color, so if this was like the four the four gold beige, I would maybe just do like a teeny little squirt of like a five OR teeny little bit. And that will just help so that you don't have an ashy green tone on the ends. And I'm gonna, I'll have to do another video where I explain color theory a little bit more, but for now, just trust me on that one. That video will come, I promise. So we're gonna grab the black. And so we're gonna uns unclip this and hold it in our hand. And now the way I do this to keep it nice and clean is I just grab the black and I start by just painting it on the outside of the shape. So I'm gonna go up into each one of these little points. And work slow, you don't wanna be too messy. You wanna keep the partings nice and clean and and this definitely can get messy if you're not careful, so. And what I like about using the Shades EQ, it's really, it's actually really kind of runny. You could even use this like in a squirty bottle if you were doing like an all over color, because it's so thin. But you also have to keep in mind that with the Shades EQ, because it's so thin, it drips easily, so. Don't get a ton on your brush. I usually just let it drip and then go over it a couple times. But it does saturate pretty well down into the, the hair. Also, if you are going to do like a, a light blonde, <clears throat> I would suggest using a non-swelling cream lightener instead of like a powdered bleach because, and I know that there's, what's the name of the one that I really like? It's um, Vermeces. Yes, Vermeces um, has a dust-free non-swelling oil lightener that's really good for kind of this kind of thing. So now I'm just going through that starter section because all of the little points are, I'm keeping it in my hand but I'm making partings and I'm just dipping the color down into the roots on both sides of each parting and slowly going through. And I'm being really careful not to pick up extra hair. I'm gonna go through and open up each one of the points also and just point both, or paint both sides of each point. So split it right down the middle and this is just making sure you don't have any little polka dots that you're missing on this first section. And this first section is a little bit more difficult than the rest of them, just because you have so much hair in your hand that you're trying to saturate with the color. The rest of them go a little bit faster. And you definitely can make your section a lot smaller than this. I took a pretty big star. You can do, you could do a star, a teeny little star this big if you wanna have smaller chunks. You could definitely do that and then just build out from there. It would take more time. And since my, and the reason why I'm doing really big chunks is because my two colors are not that different. They're pretty similar. If I had a blonde and a dark, like a level, like a level three or four or five, and then like a bleachy blonde, 
I would definitely probably do a little bit smaller, but it's up to you. It depends on how dramatic you want the block color to be. Now it's easy for me to tell if I've gotten it all because she had light hair and I'm coloring it black. But even though I can tell it's in there, I'm still going to take a comb and comb through the ends just to make sure that it's saturated all the way through. If you don't do this, you could end up with little cheetah spots where the color just didn't saturate, saturate through. Ugh, saturate? That's ridiculous. Okay, so you're just going to comb it up. Make sure you're holding it down. If you drop some of this, just try to pick it up. Hopefully it doesn't drip onto where you don't want it to go. All right, so there's our first section done. So now I'm going to spin it, just twist it down. I'm just gonna use some foil and make like a little bun with the foil on there and squish it. And that should hold it in there. There we go. And then I went and washed my hands so that I could go on to the next color. And make sure you don't have any color on your gloves from the previous color that you did, especially if you're doing dra dramatic two different really colors because you don't want some black to leak into the blonde. Okay, so once your hands are dry and clean, you can go on to the next section. So this is where we get to just start following our star pattern. I'm going to take a point straight up, and then you decide how thick you want your sections. Do you want them a half inch, an inch? I'm going to do about an inch maybe a little more. So you go straight up from that point that you did and then you just take a straight parting all the way across. And then you can grab a foil and you stick all of this on top of the foil. And what the foil is doing is just protecting the other hair while you paint. Okay, so we're gonna take this section and just paint it. all the way down. And this is a really, really thick section. So I can't just paint the top of it and walk away. I'm going to paint all of the top and then I'm going to go through with the brush this way and kind of push it through as I move the hair a little bit to roll it onto that other color. And then I'm going to flip the foil closed so that the line goes over to the other side, flip it on the other side of her head and paint the other side. You can see how it was kind of dry. The color hadn't saturated all the way through. Okay, so once you have a good amount on there, you can just close the foil up. <clears throat> and try to stand it up so that you can see the rest of what you're doing. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to here. So we're going to move back from the original star shape about an inch just to keep our pattern down. Take a parting that way and then again from this point. Straight down. So it's going to be a pie section. It's going to be like another plate. And then there's going to be another one this way so it's going to spread out like a V like this. And you're going to do the same thing. Grab a foil. I'm so stuffy. Paint that entire section. Go in with like a pencil. Just spread it out a little bit more and then fold the foil to the other side and do the same thing. So you can see right here, look at all that color that's missing. It didn't get all the way through there, so this will just get the other side. And you can definitely take this up and comb it with a comb if you're worried about it getting all the way through. Better safe than sorry. If you see any kind of dry spots, Just work it through really good. And I'm using the foil to kind of go back and forth between the brush. It's keeping my gloves clean too. 
and that will help me to keep moving without having to wash my hands as much. All right, so we're gonna just follow this pattern all the way around. Look for the point that you had before. It should be about an inch away. Go straight back to where the other one meets. There you go. If you need to, you can use clips to just kind of hold that up so that you can see what you're doing. And then I'm going to go down here. So this is already brown, but I need to move away from the section an inch just to keep my pattern going. So I can go straight down from this point, hold that hair out an inch, lift that section up. This is what I'm doing next. Okay, so then from the on the second point, you always go up from that same point and follow it. You have to make sure you're not going another inch down from that section that you already took up. And you can do this on long hair. I've done this on long hair before. It's really, really pretty. So it's it'd be cute on almost anything, any length of hair. I can't stress enough how important it is to work this color into every strand of that hair and saturate it all the way down. It's going to make the difference whether or not this turns out or not. So, Because they're big sections. If you feel like you need to take the comb and comb it through, then do it. Be careful just not to get that hair behind. And this uses quite a bit of color because of how saturated we need to get these big chunks. So make sure you have plenty of the color on hand. You don't want to run out. That would be awkward. Have a different color star all of a sudden start up. When I do stuff like this, I usually like to have two of the same tube of color on hand just in case. I'll probably only use one whole tube on her, but if, it, if she had longer hair, it easily could be one and a half too. So. So when I comb the color through the hair, it usually collects on the comb like this. I just go back through and smear it back on just so that I can get it nice and saturated on there. We're just going to meet up with this. See how the brown already comes way out here? So we're going to take from that point and just take that little pizza section and meet it up with an inch away from this other color. So now we have outlined that entire black section with the brown. And we get to switch over to the black color again. See, isn't this fun? It's a little bit faster than a traditional weave. You'll see like I probably only have like three more stars to do and then what will be left over is just like these little peaks around the face and you just color those opposite color that you did. It's really fun and fast and you can be really creative with this. You could even do three colors if you wanted to. And you could do different size partings. You could do like a light or a dark color in the biggest one and then like a smaller stripe star, a smaller section in like a medium color and then like a really little one in a highlight and just get these really random fun highlights through it. You could definitely do that. Okay, so now I'm ready to move on to my black. I'm going to do one inch sections again and this one goes all the way to her face. You can see that. So that's going to be nice. We're already getting some of that out of the way. And I'm going to clip these up with a little clip just to keep them pointy like a star shape so that I can see both of my partings. And then I'm going to grab another section over here. Since it's going straight to her face, it's easy to keep that clean and just do those both at the same time. So I'm going to take the black and just paint it 
And like I said, this is a lot runnier than the other colors, so you need to be more conservative and work a little bit slower if you're using Shades EQ. See how it just kind of melts into it? It's really, it's a really thin color. It drips really easily. I ruin my clothes a lot with this because I, I always forget to wear a cape and then sometimes I just don't want to wear a cape and I regret it sometimes because I ruin my clothes. So maybe you should wear a cape. Don't be like me. If you care about your clothes, you will wear a cape. Maybe I should put one on. <laughs> okay. So now you can see right here when I comb this hair, it looked like it was all saturated, but as soon as I start to comb it, there's blonde hair underneath there. So you need to be really careful and keep going until you don't see that anymore. And because I took this V section, and there's two of them, I'm going to split it right at the V. Grab a foil and lay this on top of it just for a minute while I comb out this top section. There we go, pin it in there. I'm gonna take this straight up and just comb the hair a different pattern than we put the hair color on just to get it all the way through. Now the foil is just going to help keep this away from the other hair. I'm just going to put it on there, fold it up. And I always leave a little flap at the end when I do these foils so that when I lift it up I can push it right against the head and keep it really clean. And it can just join those other ones up there. So we're moving on to this little section over here. We can use the same foil. As long as it's pretty clean still, flap it under. Take your comb and comb it out this way. Maybe run the brush over it one more time. All right, fold it up. and it can be joined in with all those. Okay, I'm just gonna do that all the way around the head. My hands are really dirty now, so I'm just gonna keep wiping them. Okay, so when you're running out of hair in places, see the points right here, boop, boop, you go straight down, oh, you're at the ear. So that's fine, just pretend like it's still there, go an inch up to the other section and then color that section. And then this will obviously be brown. Well, we could even do like that much brown and then one little piece of black right by the front of her face. So you're just kind of following the pattern the best you can. When you run out of hair, just be happy because it means you're getting close to being done. So keeping those pinned up just again keeps my view of my lines clean so I can see what I'm doing. Down. Some of your sections are gonna feel really little because you have that big chunk taken out from the other side. Just, it's normal, just keep following your pattern. Don't, don't try to think too hard about that. here. I'm going to take a section forward 
And you can even do a little bit thinner right in the front right here if you want to have a few more different layers. And I'm just going to finish this, this um, front up right here so that it's out of her face. Well, I need to mix up some more brown. All right, sorry, I just had to mix a little bit more color here. Um, I don't know if I told you guys or not, but with the four gold beige that I used, I'm using a 10 volume developer because we're just depositing. We don't need any lift. All right, so take this front section. Got my fresh color here. Okay, so I did my one last little V section on for the brown in the face, and then there's that little teeny triangle. I'm just going to paint the entire triangle black after I get this little foil in. I'll show you. So this entire section is going to be black. And that's okay. She wanted to be more black anyway, and it's right by her face, so that'll be what she likes. So we're good. And you're just going to paint it right onto the the triangle. Make sure all four or all <laughs> make sure all three sides are good. And then you can use the comb and just comb the color up. So that section's done. We're gonna go on to this next one and see if we can finish this one up too. We're just gonna do an inch round. And I like to roll those ends out just so that we can make sure we get all of the sides with the ends and everything. Now it's just more like working in these sections because there's not really a point anymore because you're always going to be running out of hair. All right, so I have a little bit bigger section over here. I think I'm going to do one more section of the black and then do a triangle of the brown right here. So. Everything in my hand will be black, and then this little piece by her face will be brown. Got a little bit of black on that. This should be okay. If, if I was doing blonde, I would worry more about that little bit of black that's went into there. And I could spray bottle it out really quick and dry it up, but since it's such a close color, it will probably just blend in fine. It will just blend in fine, I can guarantee it. You will not notice that little drop. Okay. Get all the little sideburns. Yes. All right, so we're just on the very last section over here. Finishing up our pattern, we're just going every other one, black, brown, black, brown. And then I'm going to let this process for a full 40 minutes because it's deposit only and I want to make sure that it gets in there nice and good and especially because her, all of her ends had been lightened I want to make sure that it's all the way processed so that she doesn't have as much fading sometimes if you rinse too early the, the color will fade out because the molecules haven't saturated all the way into the hair yet so this last little section right here is going to be black and if you remember on the other side, the, the section right by her face is actually brown. So it's going to be a little bit different, but that's okay. Now before I am going to let her process, I'm going to take a towel with some water on it and just wipe all the way around her face if I got any little splatters from the black or the brown on her face or on her ears. And you just wipe it down with water before it processes all the way so that it doesn't stain their skin. And then also right now is when I can take my color and just paint any little hairs that are left around her face. And I took the brown and did that just because the black stains a little bit more. Spray the towel with a spray bottle. 
and then just wipe any color spots down. And they should come off pretty easy if it hasn't oxidized all the way. Around her ears and the back of her ears. It's really not fun to go home after you got a color and have stained skin. It's, people don't like that. Especially men, if you're coloring men and you leave color lines on their face, they're not gonna come back. I promise you that. There's nothing to cover it up. And then everyone's like, oh, you colored your hair. Mm, not fun. Okay, so 40 minutes. I'll see you guys in 40 minutes. All right, we are done coloring her hair. You can kind of see that there's the brown and the black and the brown, but it will really pop out once we get this all dry. Anytime hair is wet, it looks a little bit darker because it's saturated. So it will look a little bit darker than it will actually look when we get it dry, but especially because we have black in there, that's gonna make it look really dark. Okay, so she is growing her hair out. She doesn't want me to cut any length off. I might go through if I see any split ends and just dust them off, but um, she wants it to be more choppy and razory. So I'm just going to go through all of it with the razor and just like thin it, texturize it. So there's really not much to this cut, just a lot of texture. So you guys can watch and maybe we'll speed it up a little bit because it's not going to be really in depth. So let's dry this up and see this fun color. All right, so we are just flat ironing this hair out. You can see now if you get really close, the really pretty chocolatey brown and then the dark black right next to each other. And it's just a really pretty ex like accent to it. So it's giving it a lot more movement and dimension and it's really fun. It's not just like all over black that can get a little bit boring and this is just a lot more fun and it's pretty simple so maybe next time somebody wants you to just do an all over black or an all over dark brown try this out on them do two similar dark browns or a black and a dark brown and then they'll have lots more light bouncing off of the certain highlights and low lights and it's just really fun so hopefully this was helpful hopefully you guys try it out let me know how it goes if you guys do try it also, um, it'd be fun to see some pictures if you guys do a more dramatic one, like a blonde and a chocolate brown or something. All right, guys, this is our finished product. I hope you like it. Let me know how it goes. If you guys try it, post a picture to my Facebook page. It's Hair One with April. Really simple. Um, yeah, any variations you can come up with. And if you have any questions on color theory, I am going to try to do a color theory video later on this week. We'll see if it gets done. There's so much about color theory. We're gonna have to kind of start at the very, very basics and work out. So it's gonna be probably several videos long, but we'll get there eventually. And maybe if you have any questions on color, you can post them below this and I can know what ones to answer when I do my video. Thanks so much for watching guys. We'll see you next time. Kind of vary on the length that you leave it. I went a little bit further. I like to stay a little bit shorter on the dark by their face so that there can be more light around their face. Um, and then I slowly get a little bit deeper with the brown towards the back. <laughs>